Hi, my name is Christy, and today my husband Lay was meant to be delivering an amazing sermon to you all, but instead he has sent me along. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the passage in Exodus where God used Aaron to speak for Moses. Well, that is why I am here today. My husband has a really great message to share with you all, but like Moses, at times he has flattering lips, and he's still also recovering from the side effects of chemotherapy. So I am here today to deliver his message on his behalf. I hope I do it justice, and I'm sure he will let me know. <laughs> so today I'll be taking, talking to you about one of Lay's favorite Bible passages, which is Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. This is not typically Lay's favorite go-to Bible verse, but this passage really humbled him this year, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34 says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So this Bible passage really humbled my husband this year. To paint a little bit of a picture for you um, about what my family have been up to at the beginning of the year. Um, this year, my husband and I planned to go to Samoa for a family holiday, which is where he was born. We also had plans to build a new home. And while all of that is good and exciting, it actually came with a lot of stress and hard work for us. With two young boys, we were making big sacrifices to try and get ahead. I myself was working a full-time job in um, a really demanding role, and my husband, Lay, was a supervisor at his job. That came with a big responsibility of looking after a group of staff. It also came with early starts. And by early starts, I mean 2 a.m. So he was working really long hours. We did our best to make ends meet while balancing family life, church life, social life. And at times, it was a real struggle. So now I've sort of painted that picture of where we were at the beginning of the year. Here is what's happened next. We didn't end up going to Samoa for our planned holiday or build a home. In March, just as COVID started, Lay was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. His diagnosis came as a shock and really made us take a step back and reflect on life and what was important to us. However, that wasn't even the start of his battle. When he was diagnosed with stage two pancreatic cancer, his oncologist said we would give him one of the strongest chemotherapy combinations, and that this chemo was his best chance to beat his cancer. For those who don't know, pancreatic cancer survival rates aren't good. Anyway, within a week of his diagnosis, he had his first round of chemotherapy. Within two days of that, he was in intensive care in an induced coma with his heart barely functioning at 5%. Yes, 
That is 5%. It's not a typo. <laughs> his heart was literally floating in his body, not pumping. He had had a reaction to his chemo, which caused heart failure and multiple organ failure. On Good Friday, I received a call at 1 a.m. from the ICU doctor informing me they had put him to sleep and they didn't expect him to make it through the night. I was beyond worried. But, miraculously, two days later, on Easter Sunday, he woke from his coma. He woke the same day that Jesus was resurrected. That is something that moved me and encouraged me, and it was certainly an Easter that I will never forget. By the grace of God, his heart fully recovered. It actually recovered to above an average normal heart function. <laughs> Even medical staff couldn't explain his healing. People's hearts just don't get better that quickly. Or, it's a miraculous recovery, they would say. A massive triumph and a testimony to God's faithfulness because we knew who was at work here. But now, it was time for him to start to face another battle and begin cancer treatment again. Unfortunately, during the two months it took for his heart to recover, his cancer had grown to stage three. His oncologist gave him a 20% chance to make it another six to 12 months of life. That was because other chemo, other chemo treatments um, that were available were not as effective. Looking back and seeing the oncologist's face when he told Lay that news, the sound of his voice was just concerning. He didn't have much confidence that Lay would make it through this, and his, key, his team kept mentioning to us the option of palliative care would be the next step. But if you are lucky enough to know my husband, you will know he is a faithful and godly man. And he revealed to me during this time that the verse I read before from Matthew, that verse came to him and humbled him and brought him back to God. He said to me, I have read this verse so many times and I didn't fully understand its true meaning until now. And as sad as it is, he truly believes he had to go through this experience for this verse to make sense to him. He realized that if, God forbid, he died during this time, everything he had previously worked towards in life, it really didn't matter. It makes sense when Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. We need to seek his kingdom and righteousness first, and all these things will be given. If we focus on God and give everything up to him, the good and the bad, and take a step back from ourselves, we allow God to take control. We allow God to provide us, to provide for us according to his will. Whether we're focusing on health issues, work, study, school, family life, church life, friendship circles. Can any one of you, by worrying about any of these things, add a single hour to your life? It's clear from this verse that Jesus said to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things that we may be worrying about will be given. Don't worry about anything. Seek him first. It's like the saying, let go and let God. Let God be in control. By reading this passage, Lay was reminded that he couldn't do this on his own strength. It would take God's divine power and healing to overcome this battle. Jesus wants you to come to him with a humble heart, to be honest with yourself and to be honest with him, to fully submit to him in your times of need no matter what that looks like, just as Lay did throughout this year. And how do you do that? Well, God tells us many times throughout the Bible, 
you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. As we're coming out of the holiday season and starting a new year, it can bring up a lot of stress and worry for some people, particularly if 2020 was anything to go by. You might be starting a new school this month, you might be a parent of a school child, you might be starting a new job, trying to find a new job, thanks COVID. Whatever trouble or worry you are experiencing, remember what Jesus says. Seek first his kingdom and righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. That's his promise. And that's a promise that lay claim throughout his battle with cancer. And I just want to reassure you that Lay is doing phenomenally well. His body ended up tolerating a lot more chemotherapy than anyone anticipated, which led to his surgical team being able to operate and remove his cancer. And as of six weeks ago, defying all odds and statistics, he is now cancer-free. He often says that he would do it all over again, just to be close with God and experience this intimacy he has with him. At the beginning of this journey, lay surgeon told him that his cancer was inoperable, which, in this day and age, surgery is the only way to effectively treat pancreatic cancer. So she said that it would be by God's grace that he would overcome this. And by God's grace, he did. So for a final word of encouragement, I'm going to share a verse that has sort of become our family's motto this year, and it's 1 Corinthians 10.31. So whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it for his glory. So friends, I encourage you, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. But trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. That is God's word for you today. Well, Christy, I want to thank you for sharing that word on Lay's behalf today. And you've shared about Lay's faith and you've shared about the journey he's been on. But I just want to tell you, the journey that you've been on has been incredible too. And it has been such a privilege to watch you grow in your faith and just find that dependence on God that Lay has as well. And I'd just like to pray for you guys, if that's okay. Father God, I want to thank you for the amazing miracle that you've done in Lay's body. And it's nothing short of miraculous. People don't recover from this, but Lay did. And I know, God, that as horrible as this has been, there's been such purpose in this and you've used this opportunity to draw this family close to you. I want to thank you that Christy has been able to come today and to share with everybody um, some of their journey and some of their story. And I thank you for the faith that you've built in her, that she's grounded in you. And Father God, I want to pray for Lay, for Christy and for the boys, Lord, that they will continue to grow in you. And that I know you are going to use this experience to, to bring glory to your name and to further your kingdom. I pray for them for strength and for courage and for peace as they go forward. And God, all the things that they missed out on this year, that you'll give them an abundance of blessing in their place. And Father God, I thank you for the message she gave today. And I, I pray for my friends at home that are watching, that they'll be encouraged by this, encouraged to turn to you in their times of trouble and to remember to seek you first and everything will be added to that. And I pray this in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen.